supernatural. What do you think about this? Colossians 1, 15 to 17. He, Jesus Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created. So we have an invisible God, and you really want to get to know him. You look to Jesus, God the Son, added to himself perfect humanity. Now, even in our mortal lives, we have the Bible, but if you were there in the first century, you'd be able to feel him and touch him and listen to him and be awed by him. But he's still God. But we have something tangible within our own capacity to love him and be in awe of him and be graced out by him. So for by him, for by Christ, all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things. I want to show you John 1.1. 1, 1. He is before all things. He's uncreated. And in him all things hold together. So all that has been created, which includes all matter, was created and is inexplicably held together by the power of Jesus Christ. Just think of the nucleus of an atom. Protons, all positive. How is that held together? Aren't the positives going to repel the positives? Amazing. All kinds of amazing things in nature that science just scratches its head. Rainbows, electricity, matter, gravity. How matter holds together, even down to sub- Atomic, atomic particles are all inexplicable and man cannot produce such things from nothing. For example, how do electrons act as both matter and wave? Hence, anything that man observes, which he cannot explain, is not necessarily due to another group of sentient be beings from some planet we don't even know where it is, that are superior to him, such as extraterrestrials. Comic books are filled with this, with no scientific evidence. <coughs> Albeit, angelic beings have been and will be responsible for innumerable supernatural events as they have in the past and will in the future. The origin and makeup of living beings from plants to animals to man is not knowable in detail by us in our mortal bodies, especially because of its irreducible complexity. That's a great topic, irreducible complexity. couple of uh, studies done on this. Irreducible complexity of humans, animals, plant forms, intelligent designer is pointed to. In any case, that's another topic which will be interesting. It's related to this. Now here is a plane flying by a rainbow, Sydney, Australia. Given their majestic multicolored beauty, Rainbows could be considered the calm after the storm. These incredible arcs are caused by a comp a what do you call it? Let me read this. By a combination of reflection, refraction, and light dispersion in water droplets, and they never cease to amaze the, and inspire. We don't know how they. We can't create this kind of thing. The intelligent designer can. Here, a plane is captured flying past one a rainbow, on a its approach to Sydney Airport. In Australia, let's take a look. There's the rainbow. You're, they're right in the middle of it. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Amazing. Any case. Phenomena that we can't explain. Here's another one. Milky Way and... First sides, Black Sea, Bulgaria. Want to really feel small? The Milky Way, of which the Earth is a part of, contains several hundred billion stars. It's possible to observe the Milky Way with the naked eye, given the right conditions. Here it's captured over the Black Sea and framed by the jaw-dropping Perseids meteor shower. See the meteor shower there. And we see all these stars in the Milky Way. And there's the Black Sea. 
There's got to be somebody. This didn't happen by accident. That is for our perspective. We have another fantastic picture. Look at that. The Aurora Borealis, otherwise known as the Northern Lights, is an elusive yet beautiful natural display created by charged particles from the sun combining with the Earth's magnetic fields. This powerful combination can result in a technicolor display, which can be even, even be seen by, from space. Key places to spot them include Iceland, Norway, and Canada. Take a look. Imagine you're right there underneath this sky. It makes you feel kind of small and kind of scary. The great God of the universe. Now we have the ocean phenomena of green flashes occurs during sunset and sunrise. Usually seen for merely a couple of seconds, such green flashes are the result of the natural prismatic effect of the atmosphere of the earth. During sunset and during sunrise, the light cast by the sun gets diverged into multiple colors, which is seen by the emitting of the green flash. Right here. Here we have the Baltic Sea Anomaly it was accidentally discovered by a team of diving experts in the year 2011. The divers found a 60 meter thick circular entity nearly at a depth of 90 meters in the Baltic Sea. <coughs> a track seemed to lead towards the entity which the divers measured to be around 30 meters. Though various scientists have offered innumerable suggestions about the entity's origins, the Baltic Sea anomaly still remains one of the unsolved intrigues and ocean mysteries of the world. Unearthed by a group of subwater explorers in the year 2011, a unique entity rests deep under the freezing waters of the Gulf of Bachnia in the Baltic Sea region. Its unprecedented finding and the aura of mystery surrounding its background have popularly led to it being referred to, referred as the Baltic Sea Mystery and also as the Baltic, Baltic Sea Mystery Object. Take a look at it again. Now you could put this in an underground, I mean in a movie, science fiction movie. The mystery surrounding the entity, though, is not because of lack of knowledge of its sizing and shape, but because of inability of the explorers and other scientists to categorize and pinpoint the rationality of it being in the water. Submerged at a depth of about 91 meters under the Gulf's waters, the entity is roundish in shape with a circumference of about 18 meters. This unique shape and its inexplicably tall height of at least about 13 meters, have given away, given away to scientific claims that the entity is an unidentified flying object, UFO. Such claims led the entity and the geography to be tagged as the UFO Baltic Sea. This claim, these claims about the Baltic Sea mystery were further reinforced when pavement-like platforms were found extending from the entity to a distance of about 300 meters. Another factor supporting the UFO claims in the Baltic Sea region was on account of the lack of viability of the explorer's high-tech gadgetry while around close proximity of the uh, unidentified entity. Oh, that link was to something that's online. Okay, moving on down. Take a look at this. The underwater crop circle. Once regarded to be objects of high intrigue, the underwater crop circles 
have been explained to be a creative demonstration of pufferfishes' quests for finding their mates. These underwater circles have circumferences of over six feet and are often decorated with shells and other decorative items found at islands of Anami Oshima. Some consider these ocean mysteries as the work of aliens. Technologies, even of today, often can appear to be supernatural especially the secretive military stuff. Naval technology provides UFO events. But new technology under patent by the U.S. Navy could shift the odds even further into the favor of stealth aircraft, leveraging lasers to produce plasma bursts that could trick inbound missiles into thinking they found a jet to chase that would actually be a little more than a hologram. This technology has already been used to create laser plasma balls that can transmit human speech. I'm going to be honest with you here. That sentence is as hard to wrap my head around as a writer as it probably is for you to grasp as a reader. Talking plasma balls. Here's a video from our friends at Military Times running down this cutting-edge plasma. Talking lasers and endless flashbang. You can search out the uh, video online. Other applications for this laser system include use as a non-lethal weapon and even as a continuous flashbang grenade that could keep opponents in an area disoriented and una unable to respond. So, how does the Navy intend to leverage this sort of technology to make stealth air aircraft even harder to hit, according to their patent, the laser system could be installed on the tail of an aircraft, and upon detection of an inbound missile, could literally project an infrared signature that would be comparable to a moving jet fighter's fighter jet's exhaust out away from the fighter itself. Multiple systems could be literally could literally project multiple aircraft, leaving inbound missiles to go after the decoy plasma fighters instead of the actual aircraft itself. Now this is written a while back, how much more technology do we have then? These laser-induced plasma filaments, as researchers call them, can be projected up to hundreds of meters, depending on the laser system employed. And here's the part that will really blow your mind. They can be used to emit any wavelength of light. Any wavelength of light. That means that these systems could effectively display infrared to fool inbound heat-seeking missiles, ultraviolet, or even visible light. Of course, it's unlikely that the system could be used to mimic the visual cues of an aircraft, an actual aircraft, but it is possible to produce visible barriers between the weapon operator and the stealth aircraft emitting the laser. Visual target signature. And we have IR target signature. And we have the missile, the IR homing missile. So image courtesy of the U.S. Patent Office. This system could be deployed instantly, reused throughout a mission, and can stay at a desired altitude or location in midair. All things flares can't do. With enough aircraft equipped, with these systems or enough systems equipped on a single aircraft, this method could be used to do far more than just project jets. In the future, this approach could become a part of a missile defense system employed by Navy ships, carrier strike groups, or even entire cities. If you have a very short pulse, you can generate a filament, and in the air, that can propagate for hundreds of meters and maybe with the next generation of lasers, you could produce a filament of even a mile. Alexandru Henning, a lead researcher on the patent, told IT Magazine 2017, It's likely that we won't see this technology lighting up the airspace over combat zones anytime soon, as there may well be years of research and development left before it finds its way into operational use.